Jesus is the Lamb of God. He is that sacrifice that God offered to cover us one time. Amen. It's all that's necessary. Once and for all. Amen. Amen. Our scripture on today is a familiar one to some. It may be the first time that others have read it. It's coming from the book of Luke in the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke. It'll be the third book. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Luke, the second chapter. And we're going to read the first 18 verses. I'll read them aloud as you follow along. Luke chapter 2, starting at the first verse. Now Luke was a doctor. And you'll find that as you read the book of Luke, as most doctors, uh, medical doctors, uh, care about the body and about living, breathing things. And so Luke writes about most of what he writes about, he writes it from a doctoral viewpoint. He's thinking about things that live, things that breathe. And this is an account of the time right before Jesus' natural birth. And so the account in Luke is a little bit more descriptive than any other <coughs> account that you may find. In chapter 2, verse 1, it says, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Now you might, you, you, you probably think you're a pretty powerful man if you can tax the entire world. Caesar Augustus, he was the emperor of Rome at that time. And the world as we know it, as they knew it at that time, was the Holy Roman Empire and all that it entailed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea and into the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with, his, with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And, they, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, 
let us go now even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. Amen. 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 And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. Amen. I just want to reason with you this morning a few brief moments on this subject, no room in the end. No room in the end. Now we've all heard this line many, many times as we've uh, gone to church plays and we have seen youth organizations and churches to enact this scene, uh, some of us more times than others. Um, I'm just so glad to see all you young people here. Amen. 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 And you will see it uh, some more. If you haven't seen it yet, you probably will partake in some Amen. of these enactments. Amen. And you will see the famous line, there is no room in the end. No room in the end. Now, our, our, there, there were so many people coming from all over to be taxed, and they were all converging on Bethlehem that every room has been taken up. And, and, and for whatever reason, well, it was part of God's plan, amen? Amen. Everything is done according to God's plan. Even the fact that you are here today amen. is all a part of God's plan. Amen. And we just receive it as such. We are so glad to have all the glorious children here uh, where you can be loved and cared for and, 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 and just looked over proper and, and have a place to, to, to grow up and to uh, fulfill your destiny, whatever God may have. Uh, in store for you. We're just so happy to to meet you and, 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 and to receive you and just have you as a part of our family. Amen. 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 Our text states that there was no room in the end. The, the scriptures do not tell us why specifically. The, the natural reason was because of the census. But Undoubtedly, Bethlehem was full because of that census. The little town's population swelled to maybe 10 or even 20 times its normal population during that time, or, or perhaps even a garrison of soldiers, Roman soldiers, may have taken up all the rooms at the end. We don't know exactly. You know, oftentimes we think of how heartless it may have been of the innkeeper to turn away a woman who was so advanced in her pregnancy that, uh, that, that, that you, you wonder, how could somebody do that? I mean, obviously, you know, if somebody showed up at our house, you know, regardless of how full and, and, and how of all the rooms were taken, you know, we wouldn't surely try to find room for one or two more just to get a pregnant woman out of the wilderness. Amen. I mean, Amen. we would all find some compassion in our heart. I hope we would. Amen. Amen. Now, the innkeeper was not acting out of malice. Uh, when he told Mary and Joseph that there was no room, he was simply a businessman making a business decision. He may have had no choice. Amen. But part of the problem is that the Israelites we're not looking at the promise of Micah 5 and 2. In the book of Micah, the fifth chapter, and the second verse, it says, But thou, 
Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. This is prophecy of the coming Messiah. This is prophecy of Christ Jesus' coming way back in the book of Micah. And the Israelites often disregarded prophecy as it uh, pertained to Christ Jesus. They just skimmed over it. They just, it, it was not in the forefront of their mind. They wanted a Messiah. Mm -hmm. But they wanted the Messiah that they had in their mind. They, they, they were not looking for the Messiah to come in the form and fashion in which he did. Amen? Amen. The people had an ignorant indifference. Now, when I say ignorant, I don't mean anything negative by that. I'm not saying that they were stupid or that they were dumb. I'm just saying that they were not aware. Mm -hmm. They were not aware. They were not learned of the situation. They had an ignorant indifference. They really didn't care. They had their own problems. Mm -hmm. And lots of times when we have our own problems, it's hard for us to be concerned about other people's problems. Mm -hmm. Our problems tend to take up all of our focus. Amen. The next person's problem is their problem. Amen? Amen. The, the people were carnal minded, which means they were thinking of the things of this world mm -hmm. more than they were thinking of things in the spiritual world. Amen? Amen? They were merely concerned with the problems of everyday life, and everyday life is going to be with us Every day. Every day. Amen. 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 It's going to be with us every day. And we have to deal with these things. I mean, the basic rudiments of life, of, of security and of shelter and of food and of, 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 of well-being. Uh, Pastor Lasagna likes to preach about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And, 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 and they're relevant. Amen. I mean, if you if you if your stomach is empty mm -hmm. and it's growling, mm -hmm. that's all you can think about. Amen. Huh? <laughs> you know, if somebody want to come and talk to you about Jesus, you can't focus on Jesus when 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 your basic need is you know, when your stomach is hitting your backbone. <laughs> Amen. Uh, that 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 becomes your focus. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Psalms ten. Verse 4 says that God is not in all his thoughts. Talking about natural man. Okay. Natural man. God is not in all his thoughts. God is not in all of our thoughts. We don't think about God 24-7, 365. I mean, just be real. Let, let, let's be real. When we leave here, the first thing somebody want to know is where we go eat. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. And, and what we gonna eat when we get there? <laughs> Amen. So I mean, you know, we 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 are real. We are folks. We're people. We're human beings. Amen. And as such, we you know we 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 are fallible. Amen. Amen. God had a spiritual purpose for there being no room in the end. The fact that there was no room for Christ in the end was to be symbolic of who Christ is and who Christ was at that time. What he would do and how the world would receive him. Amen? Amen. Every detail was part of God's deliberate plan. A butterfly doesn't flap his wings without it being part of God's deliberate plan. All right. Huh? Dust don't fall from the sky unless it be part of God's deliberate plan. Nothing in this world happens. Mm -hmm. You being here is part of God's deliberate plan. Each and every one of us. Amen? Amen. Amen. 
even as Christ was an outcast, even as there was no room for him, even though he, 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 he had yet to be birthed, there was no room for him. God has a special heart for the outcasts and the downtrodden. God has a special heart for those that feel like they don't belong. God has a special heart for those who are orphaned or those who are widowed or those who are left to their own devices. God has a special heart to those that don't fit in Amen. perfectly yeah. like society wants to uh, picture the way other people fit in, uh, the way other families are just perfect. Uh, uh, you know, Christ came and, 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 and he said that uh, in Matthew 9, verses 12 and 13, but when Jesus heard that, he said unto them that they that be whole need not a physician, mm -hmm. but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that means. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. He's not here for those who are righteous, but he's here for those who are sick, who are sin sick, and who are lost. And that's every sinner, that's every person that has yet to accept Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior. There's only two kinds of people in this world. There's sinners, and then there's sinners saved by grace. You either one or the other. Amen. And it comes a time when we have to choose which one of those we're going to be. Amen. We're all sinners. All born into sin, shaped in iniquity. Some of us have accepted Christ Jesus and the others haven't. Mm -hmm. That's all it is to it. There's only two sides of that fence. Amen. Amen. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yeah. All men matter. Mm -hmm. When I say men, I'm talking men and women, male Amen. and female. Amen. All men matter. You matter, I matter, blacks matter, Chinese Amen. matter, whites matter. All men matter. I don't care what your racial, ethnic, uh, nationality is. I don't care what your sex is, your age. All Men, all people matter. Amen. 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 And you, we all matter to Christ equally. Amen. He is concerned about each and every one of us, our souls, spiritually and in the natural. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. While he had no room, Jesus came to make room for us. There was no room for him at the end. There, there, there was no place for his family to get a, 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 a comfortable spot. But they, they, they made room out in the barn. They found themselves taking shelter where they could find it. Amen? Amen. And they, they went out to the barn. But see, this was all just to fulfill the prophecy. This was part of God's deliberate plan. Amen? Amen. In John 14, verses 2 and 3, he said, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. He is the door to that room which has been prepared for you, because Jesus said in John 14 and 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father 
but by me. And the price paid for that room was dear. Amen. He paid a heavy price for your room. In Romans 5 and 8 it says, But God commends his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, each and every one of us. Amen. How fitting that the Lamb of God would be born in a stable. How fitting that the Lamb of God would be born in a barn. John 1 verse 29 says, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. John the Baptist, his cousin, who had been preaching about his coming, when he saw him coming, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God, talking about Jesus, the sacrifice that God provided for us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let me ask you, do you have room for Christ today? Is there any room in your inn for Christ? There was a research group, the Barna Research Group. They did a poll. I'm not going to bore you with a whole bunch of numbers. But basically, 37% uh, of adults, that's about one in three, in a national survey who said they were Christians, said that the birth of Jesus is the most important aspect of Christmas. Only 37% of people who say they are Christians hmm. think that the birth of Christ is the most important aspect of Christmas. I find this to be kind of alarming. Amen. Uh, especially around here. I mean, you can't uh, drive down the street without seeing these little white signs that people got plastered all over the place that Jesus is the reason hmm. for the season. And let's keep Christ in Christmas. Amen. Amen. Christmas is not about some toy maker from the North Pole. Hmm. That's not what Christmas is Amen. about. Christmas is about the gift that God gave us mm -hmm. in the personage of Christ Jesus who became a lamb of sacrifice for our behalf who went to the cross and took our sins upon him. Even the sins that you haven't committed yet, mm -hmm. the thoughts that you haven't had yet, your forgiveness for those sins, the price for those sins has already been paid okay. by Jesus Christ. And all you have to do is accept him as your Lord and Savior. All you have to do is say with your mouth and believe in your heart that Christ lived, died, and was resurrected, and now sits at the right hand of the Father for you. Amen. Amen. And you will, from that very moment, be saved. Amen. 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 Hmm. The sin of indifference is expressed in Matthew 12, verse 30. He said, he that is not with me is against me. Hmm. There's only two sides of that fence, only two sides of that coin. Either you are or you ain't. Hmm. Amen. Either you're with Christ or you're not. Hmm. Either you have accepted him or you haven't. You're either a sinner or a sinner saved by grace. Amen. 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 Young lady by the name of Melody Dyer penned a poem and said, If today were his birth, would you know the young couple as the parents of the Christ child to be? Or would you say there's no room and turn him away? Too blind the Savior to see. If today were his birth instead of that long ago day, would you turn him away? 
Just what would you say if today were the day he came and knocked at your door? Let us stand.